That's exactly right. right. And um, people can enter. The good part about this is that, and that's why we're trying to open this up to the whole world in terms of design. There's many different levels at which you can approach the problem. And the trick is it's like really understanding the breakdown of how do you start to think about problems to break the, them down into manageable parts and knowing how to allocate roles to them. That is like the critical key. Uh, because, uh, so let me tell you this other insight, and that I just got like two days ago, and that was, so if you're a manager, what's your <laughs> limit of what you can manage in terms of getting done? Well, the thing is, absolutely anything, but how does that work? The question is cost. Like, if you're a crappy manager, and you have infinite resources, yeah, you can hire all the right people to do it, but it's gonna cost through the roof. If you're a manager right. that understands intricately every single step of that process, and has built it, and has designed it, you're gonna be able to do it at the most efficient and low cost manner possible. So, Bill Gates can build his house for 55 million. You'll be able to build that house for maybe one million because you know so much about the materials, the process, it's things like that, it, it's how it works. So you can have a crappy manager get amazing results at high cost, or you can have a really good manager get am even better results at drastically reduced cost. So that's the, that's the level at which management works. It's related to how deep you understand the process. So we, I, I come actually, my training is in physics. So I love the idea of first principles thinking. It taught me how to do that but I must tell you that those principles, like when you go down to the very basic principles, there's only so many of them, you know. You can come up with crazy formulas <coughs> at the higher level, and you can go infinite at that. But the critical thing is understanding the few basic principles, laws of physics, counting, things like that. Right. Like having the intuition, and eventually you will get the intuition, because it, it you may not necessarily know how to calculate something but if you like you said you go into free yeah. cat you seemingly like oh well this number here is too high or too low of a level where i i need to oh yeah pay attention to this and then you go and you know you research it's like oh, okay now i understand what that particular yeah. aspect of it is and, you know. i don't necessarily call it intuition it's the fact that you already know it so deeply that it just comes out like that you don't even have to think about it because uh, you're processing your your mind is really powerful it's uh, can process a lot of things uh, and it becomes rather intuitive. That's that's the genius. But but the thing is, we believe in a collaborative creation of genius. That that is teachable, and that's what you do not get in school. We can teach all this stuff, and that's that's why we think this program is going to grow because we're we're taking that absolutely empowering approach. That one, you can learn many more things much more broadly at a more fundamental level to be pretty amazing in in your capacity to to build the world. And if you can build your world, that's a complete fundamental shift of your psychology and therefore the economic and political systems. So we have this very crude <laughs> materialist approach that if you can change your reality, you can change spirituality. Or It's not the other way around. Like, like a lot of people say, oh, you just imagine this into existence. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, it's both, but but we like to we like to yeah. do it at at the level of, hey, here's some real tangible things that allow us to to be transcendent at the end of the day. Uh, but we're not saying that this oh it's some magical powers that allow us to do that. No, those are hard skills that are learned, and everything is teachable. So we really believe this uh, collaborative creation of genius part in a sense that you have to understand it well enough to be able to, to teach it and share it. Um, but I think that's good news because uh, I think uh, society can, the level of what happens in society today can just rise completely by more people becoming more powerful, more empowered, more educated, um, more capable. So yeah, uh, so we can solve a lot of the problems that exist in the in the world today, like we got to think at a higher level than, than at which the problems were created. Um, but once we learn some of the basics of just surviving, because you know the whole thing is society hasn't really learned how to survive yet. We're all kind of struggling still with this amazing technology that we have. So uh, that combined with 
being there being abundant energy solar energy to feed all the process that needs to happen on this planet uh, yeah there's just tremendous possibility and like one thing about just to make a comment about you know a lot of people are scared about the fate of the world I mean it's completely up to us to what to do um, I think the good and bad news is because we've got so much abundant energy coming to this planet we could have a populate like, you know, a lot of people are super concerned about population and stuff like that um, and we want to be wise about it but the, the good and bad news is we can probably have like a hundred times more people on this planet and be even more sustainable than we are today I mean there's plenty of energy plenty of resources it's just about how wisely we use them if we throw everything out like in today's society this is not going to be enough for even one person but if we can recycle reuse um, closed loop material cycles efficiencies wisdom then you can uh, many more people can be happy on this planet and it's really up to us to decide what those levels are um, but get away from this kind of fear fear that oh we're we're doomed I, I don't believe that at all uh, I'm very optimistic about we, everything is completely <laughs> negotiable super negotiable and it's it's I think our duty to learn okay how do we negotiate this this cruel life to make it the best not only for ourselves but for the whole world because we're all in it together mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, we say that. yeah yeah <laughs> and that's that's all you'll be hearing for the next six months you know that's all <laughs> that's what I feel like I've been hearing here already just <laughs> you know just watching how things turn out my own head yeah that's the only way is to work collaboratively and, and try to get people to, to work for themselves. Like you, you go catch the fish for the person or you teach the person how to catch their own fish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the cultural barriers are the thing that's in our way. It's the culture that people think that people already collaborate and therefore people think that's a solved issue. It's not a solved issue. People do not collaborate. We're in a stone age of collaboration and innovation in my view um, so to get to that we have to recognize that's an issue like people, people there's limits to how people collaborate just like it was pointed out to me my advisor pointed out it's like why are you doing this like yourself because it has been for a long time it's, it's open source projects are typically the heroic effort by a few stalwarts right well that's not collaborative that's why you guys are here because we're going to do it and we're going to just keep expanding the barriers and saying, hey, everything is open. So so there's plenty of incentive for everybody. And we're inviting everybody. So that's the way to go. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, so we think, uh, you know, just to encourage you going into the future. So think about we and this is like get rid of any kind of notion of scarcity thinking and I think the first week I think we'll delve into that like why do we think about why do we have a scarcity mindset and what are those things of scarcity that plague each one of us like I know I went through a lot of scarcity annihilation in my own mindset but I probably have some some left I mean there's always I definitely have some left I mean there's always room to grow you know, we always learn right we can always improve so all of us our role is to help each other see like if we're thinking about something in a scarce mind scarcity mindset first of all notice it and ask why is it and how do we get beyond it because um, there are no first principle reasons to have a scarcity mindset in today's world uh, in many ways uh, we have the technology we have the resources uh, we're kind of missing the the mindsets to make that real for more people yeah but that's where you guys got to help me I'll help you guys all with all of that uh, it's gonna be interesting it is, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it though yeah definitely no definitely definitely yeah. I think that was that was really it for mine. That's that's kind of what I do during the day is you know, I work and then I just kind of supplement and do some of the other projects that I email you about. <laughs> uh -huh. So, so you're saying this is going to be a, a 
change in lifestyle? I hope so. Um, you know, I, I can always count on the fact that I can, you know, kind of come back and, and do the same type of work, but I, I don't really believe it's for me anymore. Really, I'm just there to make the ends meet. That's, that's really it. And I know that now. So. Yeah, so I think... Um, going, yeah, going back to work is and knowing and you, having that mindset is just tough. Yeah, so if you have that recognition, then it's like, okay, we've got an opportunity to really push that forward in the next six months. How are we going to do it? And can your mindset say, okay, I'm helping everybody else do that. And I'm open to everybody help me get the same because that's why we are here. The, the help part's probably going to be a little bit of an adjustment. I mean, I, I think I work well with people, but, um, you know, I... I always been taught to try to just do things myself if I, you know, at most, with the most effort, if I can't, then ask for help, but sometimes it's just easier to have the help and work with everyone else in the beginning, so you don't burn any burn time. I can guarantee you that it's easier, like, easier to get help. Uh, I think that's a big lesson for a lot of people, though. Um, for me, it's... Uh, I have certain goals to achieve like I want to I'd like to change the world to, to a collaborative economy and to me it's like okay uh, I know I cannot do that myself I know I need more help than ever or a lot of help to get there uh, so it just becomes a practical thing it's like if I want if right. I choose my goal to be a little bigger and I would encourage you to do that expand it expand that goal but then expand what goes into that. And that is help from other people is a definite thing. Um, so that's something that I mean, hopefully like culturally within the program, I, I think we address that by getting that out into the open, making that, okay, hey, um, I know there's tons of people that think that for some reason that's not okay but I can't, gotta say it's extremely on my side it's like it's extremely liberating to be able to do that it's like I right now it's like if anytime I'm troubled oh like this is too big then I say to myself <laughs> I ain't doing it we're gonna do it and that's an extremely liberating thing I I leave the cross of Jesus <laughs> right I've done that I used to carry that cross a little bit <laughs> no more. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so we're all gonna carry it together. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Oh, because we're all gonna carry it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, let me go for it. <laughs> Put a little bit on, but that's why we gotta say, okay, hey, a thousand more people, uh, come over here and help us a little bit. Um, yeah. It's get, getting a little yeah. heavy. So you hold this other piece right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's it's uh. So it's extremely liberating, I gotta say, from my experience, and my mentor has helped me see that. Um, <laughs> it's 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 just amazing, kind of like how your mindset, your like what you think about how you gotta do things. Everything is negotiable, and you know, first principles wise, hey, neuroplasticity exists. People didn't know that brain cells grow; they do. Your entire body replaces itself every so often. I think on a scale of seven years even your bones are 100% replaced by new cells. Imagine that. And then they recently, the recent science says that, hey, brain cells actually grow too. So we're effectively recycling ourselves. So you can think, hey, we can actually completely change our lives, change our mindsets, we can definitely change our bodies. Like our skin gets replaced like every few days, every week or so. Um, so, you know, the world is completely negotiable is the, is the point. It's, uh, and we have uh, and, and our mindsets, since we have pow very powerful minds as humans, the, you know, what's known to be the most advanced form on a, this planet, uh, we have a lot of power to how, I mean, the, the brain is our, if we can master how we, um, how we think, the clarity of our mental models, that's a big, big topic. How do we make sure that all our mental models are more and more accurate, resembling reality? That's... Uh, that's the science of general semantics. How do we create meaning? And how do we make, how do we uh, make, how, just how do we make sure that what we're perceiving is, 
is it more accurate? Because it's not accurate. We're always filtering. You know? For spiritual leaders, it's like, we'll tell you, oh, it's, reality is not what it seems. Well, it's true. It's, that's what general semantics says. Um, things like that. So there's a lot, a lot we can do yeah. with our mind shifts. Um, and I can only share my, my own story. It's like, yeah, my mind has shifted. So I, I feel pretty liberated in many, many ways right now. And I feel, personally, I feel omnipotent. <laughs> 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 like I can do anything uh, and I think the world would be a better place if more people had a higher sense of oh I can actually do have a lot of impact on the world around me uh, and the, I gotta say the easiest way to get that is by changing your physical realities building things is an extremely powerful way to get some of that insight um, so that's I, I could say personally probably that's that's where my feeling of solutions like okay political crisis environmental crisis resource crisis <coughs> oh it's negotiable i can build things i can uh, do completely re create regenerative systems regreen the deserts hmm. clean up toxic pollution by more benign processes innovate collaborate there's, there's a lot of problems to solve we can we, only way we can do it by is by working together so yeah that's uh <laughs> extremely empowering to for anybody to see that and that's why uh, I'm trying to spread this word um, I imagine I envision that this turns into like we have a number of these campuses worldwide you guys are the first cohort of, of apprentices we learn it and we spread the word I'd like to make uh, like I, I mentioned to you Joshua about you know take a thousand acres of degraded land regenerate it a forest that create a healthy thriving community make it a model for anyone anywhere in the world take a chunk of desert right take another part there's a plenty of regeneration to be done the the deserts all used to be forests if you study the green history right. of the world mm -hmm. you know we can re regenerate and we can make it way better because we've got much more know-how and just raw physical capacity to do that uh, so choice is ours and and so I'm excited to be alive. I mean, at, at that level, <clears throat> I think like the, the case will have sold itself. Like if you're able to regenerate land, then there, everyone will be able to see that. Like there was a documentary on oh, yeah. how, uh, at how parts of China, the yes. Chinese desert were regenerated as well. Exactly. It was really interesting. Yeah, you know, John Lee, if you're, documentary you, films, right? Yeah, yeah John Pro. Yeah. It's so like if you can have your brand behind that or a group of people behind that, then it, you know there's there's really nowhere else you can not reach after that. You know, people support you. The governments, I think, will have a little bit more respect and support whatever endeavors you want to take on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a powerful case would be take the biggest trouble spot anywhere. You know, regenerate it. You know, say we collaborated with some rogue government, and hey, we get a little parcel <laughs> and create a Isle, Isle of Paradise there. Um, you know, the kind of... Other people have done it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's doable, but showing those kinds of models that are more integrated and more creative than anything before, yeah. Uh, when you say people have done it, what's the best example you can point to? So, like, the, the micronations or, like, free states or people trying to kind of declare their sovereignty from... or trying to declare their sovereignty from the larger government are you talking about like the republic of minerva and stuff or there, there's there's all those yeah and melosia and um i think there actually is there actually are some zones in europe as well but, mm -hmm. um there's also the, the intentional communities as well like if they're still obviously participating in the larger society but they have their own lifestyle and have their own way of going about things internally yeah yeah. You know, and they're more, you know, more or less self-sufficient. Some things they have to go to society for, but yeah, yeah. I used to be troubled by that issue, like, oh man, how are you gonna lose the grip of the gum that's on you? But no, it's uh, it's easier than that, actually. I think that, um, <laughs> like, so the the way I think about it is like your your um, 
economy creates the politics. So say you know you take this chunk of land that's right. you know you, you develop the whole system where it's essentially a, a regenerative city or village. Uh, that that starts to breed its own economics mindsets and and the issues of being in con like you know the other people who are in control and telling you what to do. Uh, that kind of leaves like, but it has to be inclusive. Like you can't just say, "Oh, I'm just gonna bug out and leave." No, it's it actually is gonna take all of society to get there. That's why we emphasize this is inclusive. This is collaborative design for a for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. You can't just say, "Oh, we're gonna just gonna leave." Like you gotta think about who you left and taking care of them too. So. As soon as I open up and say, oh, I'm not going to leave. I'm just going to like invite myself to a country. You know, for example, the alternative way to, oh, I'm just going to secede. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to invite myself somewhere and show a good example. And it's going to be loved and accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a much more empowering way to right. think about it. You know? And I think that's, that's what we got to do. There won't be resistance. If, if we believe in an inclusive part, like, you know, a lot of times I used to think, oh, like, you're going to take me out or something. Because I want to do this. No, it's not going to happen. Because I'm include. I'm, I'm going to include. I'm going to try to include as many people as possible. That's the only safety you have. So, if you want to transform the world, you got to be inclusive. You got it. Because they take out people who kind of go off on their own. The system has kind of has its yeah, defense well. mechanism for that. So, we can't fall for that. You got to transcend and include. But yeah, like when I first got out here, I was way into that kind of stuff. Like I was really troubled by, um, was, you know, much more into the, the sovereignty movement and all that. But after that, it's like I start to see, hmm, well, you need certain functions that society does offer. So how are we going to do that? We can't just throw out these certain functions. We have to build them in, too. And we can't run because we can't run forever. So the only way you can do it is create instead. Right. And then they actually start attacking. to move the movement, the shift toward having yeah. that be the norm. Yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta include everybody. That's the bottom line. Uh, yeah. That's how we roll. That's just so our social contract, our mission. It's all about that, and um, we're here to create culture. Yep. So. Where do you live, Joshua? Um, I'm in Henderson. So I, I stay with my dad. But um, yeah, I, I tell him about this, and he's yeah, trying to get it across to him in a way that he understands. It's like, OK, I'll, you know, some of these things I'll have to go and see for myself. But to me, it, this is really the only way. Focusing on money or focusing on getting your own self out, like we were just talking about, really may work like you may survive but it, there won't be any other change there won't be yeah any thing meaningful left behind for anyone else that may come after you right. if with just going with that mentality so henderson yep. tennessee nevada where did i get tennessee from nevada the, um who's from tennessee someone was from tennessee okay hmm. um yeah. Well, Dunda, what, any, any comments on the subject matter? Yeah, I was thinking, uh, as you guys were talking about uh, uh, building these, uh, like, people having these ideas of building these separate uh, communities, um, one of the things I've noticed is there's a lot of um, countries that They've got really high like import tariffs, and yeah. um, I would think that uh, uh, you know the local industry would build up. It doesn't usually happen, um, but in the case of a place like uh, you take most countries in South America, um, importing anything um, like electronics, um, it's it makes the cost of those goods. Yeah. Um, a lot a lot higher in those countries mm -hmm. and so I would think that uh, some of the stuff that we're doing um, would be appealing to people in those countries and also I also think about Puerto Rico where um, the cost of shipping 
uh, things to Puerto Rico is uh, extremely high because there are laws that uh, restrict the kinds of uh, shipping companies that can um, enter into Puerto Rico's docks. Mm. And so um, I would also think they would, they would want to have a more um, self-sufficient economy. I mean, they do. And so the stuff that we're doing would definitely appeal to places like that. Uh, the best thing to do is to find people from those locations, have them participate. Um, and I would say immediately to that, it's like, yeah, so what's so what's the enterprise model that makes it go? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of structural things and you know the whole environment in another country. That's why I don't want to go, like, I have no clue what, what it's like in another country. I wouldn't assume that. Uh, I do know a little bit about America, how things work here, just a little bit. Um, so I feel mo most qualified to make change and, and say, okay, this business model will work. Um, but we need that kind of development. It's really the what I mentioned is the entrepreneurial savvy. It's all it's all doable. It's all huge demand. Like in the other countries where they don't have an economy, here you can have an entire economy. Okay, but how do we get there? Is it that one politician in that country that understands it? Is there support? Is there people there that get it and, and stuff like that? Uh, there's a lot of structural reasons for why this could or could not happen. Um, eventually it is going to, I eventually envision leapfrogging everywhere, absolutely. Once a few good case examples get made, could be a, could be a highly effective community right here, like our place, for example, where we've got, we're making tractors, we're building homes, we're producing brick, we're producing concrete and steel all on this in a completely regenerative way, like just crazy stuff where you have, a, okay, here's a robust economy. It's like, bam, enough is there. So right now we need to, to fill in the missing pieces that turn it from uh, this amazing productive capacity to something that's a little less. You know, we're not there yet as far as, oh, we're absolutely blow up amazing productivity. Yeah, we have some, some, some examples of that, um, but we need more. Uh, so, for example, like if, if we talk about your personal goals, like okay, so you're sitting down on a computer. I'm, I'm on my, I got my three monitors right now. I upgraded. <laughs> uh, so I'm doing some design here, a wiki documentation, sharing that. The other window, I've got, um, you know, some designs I'm working on, throwing them directly to the CNC torch table for for builds. And another window, I've got. 3D printing and running another enterprise autonomously or like even controlling my tractor <laughs> remotely here while I do the found like right now I'm actually driving my tractor on the, for the foundation because it's remote control uh, stuff like that just crazy stuff that blows out any productivity issues out of the water more efficient better uh, everything else an example like that I believe can very much shift the world uh, so it needs a little bit of energy to get that going but once that that kind of example is possible it's awesome. So for all of you guys, you should be at the end of this, this six months, be okay, here's, I can design anything. I can send it to the torch table, maybe router or other machine or 3D printed and it's like rapid prototyping. You're collaborating with the whole world, engaging others um, and having the real productivity on site too, like with your rapid prototyping and a 3D printer and other machines. So, so that kind of capacity where it's like, wow, this is like super amazing. That's the kind of level we need to get, get into where we can teach that effectively. So it's not just a dream for anybody, but it's so easy to teach and all of that, that, that we can replicate this effectively. And that you might hear that a little bit in a FreeCAD test, how I mentioned that we're trying to get on board anybody in FreeCAD in like one hour. You know, teach anybody that in like one hour. Let's do that. But it takes all these little <coughs> elements. Okay, here's how we teach somebody extremely effectively, rapidly to make it happen so that anyone else can do this. That's the place we need to get to, and that takes a lot of work. Um, and imagine, like with Wes, like you know, all the gamers are actually designing homes for us, and we're recording the the game to get real build instructionals for that home. Like crazy stuff. Where yeah, uh, the the collaboration is just insane. That's the place we need to get to. And then you don't have to worry. Like, am I going to make a living? Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to convince my father about this? <laughs> no. No, it's like it's gonna speak for itself. It's it's um, that's it's what's coming. It's we're just you know making our way towards that, and it's gonna be bigger than the huge. Um, I believe it's gonna be bigger than Apple, Google, and all of them combined. It's bigger than that. It's hardware. Hardware is um, the software economy is what it's. What percentage of the economy today is software? 
depending how you count it, it's either like a small 1% or like 20% maybe. What, what is it? By the revenue from that software companies make. Um, it's probably um, like... Well, I think uh, software is typically a lot more profitable because there aren't uh, material costs, and so uh, that like that's why the valuation on tech companies is huge because mm. like Google can like, get a much higher profit margin than like an air, air, airplane company. What are the actual numbers? <clears throat> like what's what's the size of the software economy compared to the rest of the economy? Um, and I would make a claim like even software, software deals with hardware. It deals with controlling hardware. Like at the end of the day, it's somebody growing a potato, building something, making an autonomous vehicle, producing gasoline or whatever. Uh, software facilitates all that collaboration with all of that. I mean, but it ends up in, okay, what are we producing in order to survive? And then of course there's a service economy and, and information and stuff like that. But most yeah, of it dude. still lands in, okay, we're digging the earth and we're growing plants, we're digging rocks and making steel and stuff like that. Um, well, I, th I think the best way to get um, like a snowball effect with, with open source hardware would be to reach the same like um, level of profitability as, as software. Oh. Much more. Yeah. Yeah, the potential is actually much more. But yeah, that's that's the idea. That it has to be. Uh, just like Linux, Linux has shown that the, Linus was smart initially. He said like, okay, we got to get to a minimum viable product so that there will be financial feedback loops coming. That's what happened with Linux. I think Li Linus was actually quite explicit about that. Like, we got to ship at least something so that now companies would start doing that. And within about a year or two, that happened. Whereas companies start saying, hey, this oh, we can use this. Let's let's feed it some money here. So that's that's the same thing we're doing here. Exact same thing. It's like now, you know, imagine a point where it's, which is inevitable at a certain point where, okay, there's a common core that we oh yeah, developers are actually developing things that hardware companies like John Deere or Case Tractors, whatever, they're actually dipping into that common pool of knowledge because it's, it's cheaper, better, faster you know, kind of deal. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the same process has to happen. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's the same I, thing. I was actually thinking um, if you wanted to get the snowball effect, see a lot of uh, immediate. Uh, uh, results as far as people uh, adopting some of the technology quickly. I, I think playing to the strengths of open source hardware is really important. I think a lot of uh, the projects that uh, emerged early in the open source hardware movement, they were um, like little computer boards which uh, at the end of the day um, big factories um, could scale and produce that at a lower cost and so oh, yeah. um, there was a uh, uh, a lot of uh, some people were disappointed because they felt like oh well this is the end game it's just gonna get taken but I think uh, when it comes to open source hardware the real strength is um, doing it at a scale or finding opportunities that uh, um, offer um, offer fabricators the opportunity to um, uh, create niche products because um, if you can uh, build things that are niche um, and then it's not going to get taken over by some bigger company um, or if they will they're going to be solving uh, the problem that uh, uh, is more general the problem that uh, uh, the general consumer um, needs solved, but there are plenty of opportunities for small fabricators when it comes to niche products. So, for example, um, the tractors, um, different, uh, I mean, a lot of farmers, they just don't want a whole lot of the technology. They, uh, yeah. A lot of them want simple tractors, which they don't sell anymore. Um, uh, but some some farmers might want more complicated tractors with um, GPS and all that. Um, but if, when it comes to a uh, uh, building tractors on a small scale, you can offer customized products based on um, what the individual yep. consumer wants, and that's yep. some place. That's one place that uh, um, 
really benefits small fabricators. That's something they can do more efficiently. Um, and so if you're building products that are mm -hmm. customizable, yeah. then a lot of people will um, start contributing to those projects because they will see, okay, I can sell these products to my community. I also think about things like uh, uh, appliances and <laughs> furnaces, things like that. Um, we've, we've already got, uh, uh, there's already HVAC technicians who um, uh, go around uh, their cities uh, fixing up HVACs. Why not have an open source uh, HVAC which uh, yeah. will provide a company an opportunity to sell an HVAC and uh, sell a, uh, say, a subscription service where they'll come and fix any problem. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless once you um, uh, offer the opportunity to uh, customize a product. That's what we're trying That's to do different. with our yeah. construction set approach. Yeah. That's kind of the motivation behind it. Yeah, yeah. and I, I understand that. I, I just think that uh, a lot of the skepticism uh, behind a project like this comes from the idea that uh, by opening things up then well yeah the scarcity mentality by opening things up then a big company is going to come yeah. in and uh, produce it more cheaply mm -hmm. and so if we so yeah just the emphasis on customization and showing that uh, the little guy uh, can make a live can get their share too I mean yeah that's a, a really, really important thing on the side that could be a tactical approach and avoiding the oh yeah you're going to get gobbled up by somebody who does that so that could be a first step but it doesn't stop at the custom products because if you have open design then for for example for heavy things you say just simply on efficiencies like for example if you're going to transport some heavy object from china it just doesn't make sense just transportation makes it more effective to do that, that here, here or, or like, like say agricultural systems that are super efficient on the hyper local, local level uh, so, so that's, that's where like, like things like, like delivery CSAs, CSAs are like, like community supported agriculture or manufacturing operations uh, I, think I think the potential is much greater than, than what you say, say. like initially maybe like, like yeah, custom products could be but I don't think uh, I mean, but, but how does that, that fit, like, like, for example, example with, with the house? house? I mean, is our house a custom product? It's kind of a mainstream product, right? And, and we're, we're saying, okay, that's, that's, that's got a huge market, and because we're efficient on it, nobody can beat us. We, 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 get, we put certain efficiencies into the process. Mm. Yeah, um, with the house, I don't know uh, how that would fit. My, I, I mean, I'm just thinking as a marketing approach yep. that... Uh, the uh, what is it? I'm just thinking as a marketing approach that building. Uh, oh hi! Uh, <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everyone. I, I, I think, think you showed up, up two hours of difference, though. <laughs> uh, but, but we're still, still on. on. Well, it's because of the time zones. We've had a few people. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Did, did I mention, did did I mention, mention CSC in an email? email? I think there was some in, in some of the replies. I just kind of assumed it, so. Oh, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe we didn't oh, mention CSD, but we kind of... We kind of... Um... Slightly different time schedule <laughs> difference. But <laughs> since, since you're, you're here, here, welcome! We're, uh, we're Thank you. We're yeah, like, sorry I didn't see that in the email. I, I, I thought you said 10 a.m. PST as well. That's perfect, but... Did, did, did I say CSD or did I miss it? it? I don't. I don't even remember. All I just saw was 10 a.m. and I was like, "All right, 10 a.m." Okay. Well, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that, you guys. But uh, so, so we're in an after party of two hours. hours. We're like <laughs> two hours different. Um, in in fact, fact, yeah, about two hours. hours. But, but tell us, Prince. So, so we kind of introduce ourselves. So you can see, you can review the videos that we're actually capturing all this. Um, so you can review all we talked about. It was pretty good discussion. But um, tell us. Maybe you can just introduce yourself. Where you're from, and what your goals are for the next six, six months while you're here? Yeah, my name is uh, Prince Robinson. I live in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I work in uh, the casino marketing industry out here. Um, and for the next six months, I'm really excited to learn as much as I possibly can about um, 
everything that I everything that I can really you know about um, 3D printing, about building the houses, about every little type and um, piece of machine machinery that we can get our hands on. I'm really excited to learn, and yeah, I'm really excited overall. But mm-hmm. yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and we, we will, will have plenty, plenty of chance to do exactly that and more. Probably more than you can handle. <laughs> but that's good. You're out here by me. Yeah. Oh, you live in Vegas too? Uh, Anderson. Yeah. Anderson? Oh, yeah, nice. Look at us. You know, just look yeah. nice. Two, from, two from Nevada so far. Wow. Not bad. Yeah. Gotta regreen these deserts out here, man. I know. you tell me about it. Hot spot. Open, open development, development right, right now. now. I thought, I thought that, that was Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, anyway. anyway um, so, so yeah, very cool. So yeah, I, I think I got, we we um, we can stay here forever, but we'll have plenty of time on site. So I'd say um, yeah, let's let's start wrapping this call up. Uh, but um, so Prince, don't want to like quit on you here, but we do have two hours that you can review. It's, uh, upload it as soon as we're done here yeah uh i gotta get back to the, the cd home design because unfortunately i didn't teach anybody yet how to design it all and i couldn't find any people on like fiverr or the team uh, it's it's pretty hard to get people I mean, the trouble spot here is we're doing con- totally like non-standard design and we can't just find an architect that knows how to do it or doesn't even rebel at the fact that we're building like this uh, so, so we just, just had a hard time, time. and I actually got to go back to uh, finishing those designs because we were planning a major sprint here in a few days uh, from now, before the end of the month. So I got to get back to that. But uh, I think this is really good to meet all of you. We'll have plenty of time. This is going to be where we're building our tribe and all of that. Uh, and growing this, like maybe we'll end up with twice or ten times the people by the time we're in December. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But... Um, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's, let's wrap up. Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta, gotta get going myself. You guys, you guys are welcome, welcome to stay on if you like. But I'm gonna cut out here, and I'm still recording this. So if you wanna keep going at it, but I, I gotta get going and do some other work on my side. But thanks again for uh, showing up, and we'll continue very soon. Yeah. yeah. I'll be heading off as well. It's uh, midnight for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly 12 hours. So I'll, I'll um, hang, hang up, up here. here. Uh, if any other guys, guys want to keep talking, go ahead. But uh, we'll, we'll get, get going. Oh. And we'll have plenty more, more to talk about when we get here. So thanks again. Take care, everyone. Get yeah. back to work here. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take care, guys. Take care. Good night. Good night. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>